What's going on everyone, it's Justin here and welcome to another Cool Tech episode where we take a look at some of the products that have showed up in the last couple months that I think are unique, cool, maybe you don't see them every single day, but I haven't done this video in a few months and the last couple months has just been so busy with new tech releases and really exciting products in all different categories. In this month's episode, we have the new NVIDIA 3070 graphics card that has proved to be very powerful at the price point if you're able to find it. Also some toys that I personally picked up such as the DaVinci panel for color grading and the Canon C70 camera, but also some nice like transparent speakers and just cool style gadgets that also bridge a little bit of tech. So if you guys are excited for this and would like to win a product in this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, drop a like on this video and also leave a comment down below and follow me over on Instagram and I'll announce a winner in two weeks. So one of the cool products that has showed up in the past couple months is the LG Wing. And LG's been a company that has been making phones for a very long time and the past couple years has been trying a few different things, some of which have been working better than others. This is kind of like a new concept that is honestly quite strange and something that you don't see every single day, but it is their brand new Wing smartphone. And it actually has kind of two screens, one on the bottom and one that is your primary one that also rotates side to side. And I think it is actually a cooler idea than I first imagined when I saw it. So some of the things that this allows you to do is like type and do some general stuff on your phone while you're also watching a YouTube video, or if you want to like just sit down and watch a video but you don't want to hold your phone in like an awkward horizontal angle I know it's like a very first world problem then you're able to hold it like you usually would but be able to watch a video on a large display so even though this isn't exactly going to be for everyone I think it actually has a pretty good level of execution and you can see the display just kind of glides into place and it's very seamless the main display is 6.8 inches in size and the secondary is 3.9 and on the spec side of things it has the 765G which is 5G compatible as well as 8 gigs of RAM and the display isn't the only thing that moves because the front facing camera is actually a 32 megapixel pop up camera just like what we saw from OnePlus. The battery is 4,000 milliamp hours and it also has an in-display fingerprint sensor. So on the tech side of things, it seems like LG pretty much threw like everything at it and just made a phone that had all the futuristic features and ideas that they've had in mind. And honestly, like I said, it sounds pretty weird, but I'd almost say it has more practical abilities than something like the Samsung Galaxy Fold. So if there are two product categories in the world of technology that have made the biggest advances in 2020, it's gotta be computers and cameras. And on the computer side of things, companies like AMD and Nvidia have really been going back and forth in terms of producing products that are competitive to consumers and pushing limits of performance. So this right here is the GeForce RTX 3070 that has been really, really hard to find. And that is just because it is such a great value for the price point that it offers and the power that it delivers. This video is sponsored by Micro Center and you can find these cards over at Micro Center. They have a whole selection of PC parts in their stores across 25 locations in the US. And if you guys go ahead and check out their website, they do have a PC part picker that lets you put together the perfect computer at your target price point for same day pickup at their locations. And you can also have them assemble it for you at a small fee. Micro Center does have a small gift for you guys, so if you guys go and check that link down below, you can get a free SD card or USB stick with no purchase necessary. It is a limited time offer that is available in store only. Just go ahead and enter your email address and get the coupon code. I'm also gonna drop a link down below to Micro Center's landing page of the new Nvidia GeForce line. So going back to the 3070, I feel like this has definitely got to be one of the most interesting pieces in the lineup. The 3080 and 3090 as well as AMD's offerings all look extremely competitive and pushing that limit of power, but the 3070 is a card that comes in at a retail price point of $499, and when it comes to benchmarks itself, it is actually able to compete, if not match, and even sometimes beat last year's highest end processor, the 2080 line. It does it all with just eight gigabytes of video RAM, and of course if you're doing like more intensive work and like more video editing, then you might want to have more video RAM, but when it comes to what I need it for and just playing like Formula One and stuff and that whole setup and custom PC that I'm building right now, this card right here is able to get that job done and I think it allows a lot of people to upgrade their setups at a price that is lower than what people are selling last year's top end processor for with very similar performance in a lot of areas. This right here is the ASUS model and it has the dual fan setup. So let's just go ahead and install it in the computer and play some quick games and show you guys what the performance is that I'm getting. 
The main game that I'm intending to use the GeForce RTX 3070 for is Formula One, which is a game that can have very good graphics, but by no means is it one that really demands like something like a 3080 or a 3090 and really take full advantage of it. So I set up Formula 1 with a 144Hz display, and although like my steering wheel and all that stuff is not here yet, I was still very anxious to go ahead and try it. And for the most part, it was able to handle everything very nicely, and I still have to kind of put together my own custom gaming PC setup because I'm waiting for some parts to arrive, but so far this graphics card has been just what I needed. So the next piece of cool tech is a transparent speaker and I saw this over on Uncrate a couple months ago and just thought it looked so cool and would go perfect in the new office space and they just happened to reach out so they actually make this in a white and black model and I've got to say I'm having a tough time deciding which one is better looking. So just on the outside you can tell it is just so well built it is very stylistic and goes very well on any like coffee table um, it is a bluetooth speaker as well so you can stream your music directly to it and also plug in like 3.5 millimeter but just based on build and looks you can see like this frame that goes around looks awesome it has a tempered glass dimension across all sides so you can see right through it from all different angles as well as the two class d amplifiers that are built in of course these are three inch drivers and when it comes to sound quality, I would say it is okay, but a lot of what you're paying for is the design and I feel like just for that, it can be worth it for some. It is fully compatible with all the streaming platforms though, as well as in wired form and it charges via USB type C. There's also these nice uh, toggles and dials on the front and the packaging even came with white gloves so maybe I'm not supposed to hold it like this. Even though I'm someone who just uses a Sonos for the most part, I find that speakers can be designed in so many ways that make great home decor but also serve some functional use as well. So in the new office, I've kind of been picking a few pieces in the audio field to add some decor to the place. So I can't believe that this is something that I'd wear in a YouTube video. I never thought that a video idea could get this lame, but I'm working on a Formula One simulator right now with the new custom PC, a crazy seat, and also just the steering wheel. So I thought I would talk a little bit about it, give you guys a bit of a sneak preview, but this right here is the Fantech Podium Series steering wheel. And I picked it up on eBay. Uh, I believe it is like the limited edition uh, Formula One license one, but it is a steering wheel for a simulator that you can use on a gaming console or with a custom PC. And when I received it, I was just so impressed by the build quality and just how amazing it feels. Obviously, I've never driven a real Formula One car, but I'd almost say that the gear shifts and everything feel better than an actual car that I've had before. It is all like forged carbon fiber. You look at it at the front, all the details are there. You have your gear shift lights as well. You can customize all the buttons for like DRS, your pit limiter, and where you would like everything. Everything. and there's also your brake bias sliders right here and some of your engine modes that you can control. So I feel like it's like a good mix of an authentic experience that is still relatively easy to learn. And if you're playing for hours at a time, the grip on the steering wheel is also nice with the perforated leather, but I think the forged carbon fiber just looks so good. And the magnetic paddles are also another thing that I noticed. And the way you put it on is uh, to attach it to the actual driving column that I still need to get. But Here's a look at it from the side and everything and it also shows your speed on a small LCD out front. So look out for a video of this sometime soon because I'm just waiting for parts, everything is delayed, but I'm trying to make this as cool of a video as possible as a Formula One fan and my dream obviously is to film a race someday but I thought I would talk a little bit about this steering wheel because I know a lot of you guys in the comment section are huge Formula One fans as well. So another product that showed up this month was the BenQ Mobius display and I didn't really think I would use it or like it that much because I've definitely checked out a lot of monitors but after plugging it in as like a second monitor and also trying it with my gaming setup briefly I have to say it is one of the better monitors that I've used to date. It comes in a 24 and 27 inch option but the reason why it's a solid display is because it has 144 hertz support as well as all the gaming features including AMD FreeSync. If you have a PS5 or an Xbox Series X, it is also compatible with gameplay at 120Hz on those consoles. I've just been using it as a secondary display though and may connect a game console to it soon for my desk setup and I have to say the contrast and the colors are just really really good. It is an IPS display with 99% sRGB coverage. It also has HDR10 support which contributes to the great color quality and everything and especially when using it with compatible devices, you can definitely tell. Obviously you probably can't tell just through the screen and everything, but this is such a good monitor to the point where I'm willing to have something as ugly as this sitting next to my exterior display on the desk. 
So another product that really goes into a cool tech episode is the Asus Zephyrus ROG Pro Duo. And this right here is a computer that is overkill in almost every aspect. And that is kind of what cool tech is all about. So first off, you've got rainbow keys on the bottom. You also have a trackpad that doubles as a calculator. And it just looks so futuristic with this animation that we have here right now. And the display almost kind of pivots into position as you open up the computer and it just welcomes you. You've got a 4K secondary display as well as a 4K main display that is also able to run in 1080p at a 300 hertz refresh rate, which is crazy. And on the inside, you've also got all the latest and greatest specs, including an i9 processor, an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 Super with eight gigabytes of GDDR6 graphics and ROG Boost. And the model that I have in front of me has 32 gigs of RAM and also two two terabytes of PCIe memory. So when it comes to the price point, it is definitely not cheap, but if you're looking for a great productivity and gaming computer, then this one is just checking off all the boxes in every way because you're able to have like your timeline down here and even like gaming menus and all that kind of stuff while you use and play on the main display. It's not thin, but it also isn't that thick for its size. And it also has all the ports that you need both on the back and on the side including full-size HDMI, Thunderbolt, Ethernet, and everything. And you've also got these massive vents with a fan on the side because this thing definitely has to breathe. So this is just one of those computers that I think, once again, similar to the LG Wing, brings together all the crazy features that these companies have and put it into one ultimate product. So over the past couple of years, the best lines of vacuums have come from Dyson, particularly their line of handheld and cordless ones that just seem to have all of the boxes checked off in terms of a great cleaning tool for the house that works well, has good battery life. And the one that I've been using is the Dyson V11 Absolute. As you can see, I should probably empty the canister, but this is the top end model in their lineup that has the gold accents in their limited edition model. But it has overall been very reliable. It has great battery life. It has a screen on the back that gives you the option to switch between the medium, the max, and also the efficient mode to save battery. And in general, it is just a great tool for like a condo or a house, but they've also made a new model called the Dyson V11 Outsize that is particularly good for larger spaces due to its longer battery life and larger canister. As you can probably tell, it is significantly bigger than the Dyson V11 Absolute, and this gives you 150% more capacity. And on the battery side of things, it gives you 120 minutes of runtime compared to 70 minutes on the V11 Absolute. It also has a 25% wider cleaning head, so I like that Dyson Dyson has taken their flagship product, which is the V11, and made a model that is more curated towards larger homes, as well as a smaller model that is super portable and best for like a one bedroom condo where you just don't need something to take up more space than it needs to. Just on the cleaning side of things though, Dyson includes all the heads that you need, whether it is for like carpet, hardwood floors, the crevice tool, um, and my house is super dusty. The rug produces a ton of dust, my computers and everything. So. Having a tool like this is awesome. So if you guys wanna go ahead and check out the link to the Dyson V11 Outsize, I'm gonna drop that down below. So another really cool piece of tech that I've been checking out recently is one that Blackmagic sent over. And as someone who does like video editing and is trying to get more into like learning how to color grade the videos and make them a little bit better, I think this is such a cool product and it is way more useful than I originally expected. So this right here is the DaVinci Mini Panel and it allows people who color grade using DaVinci Resolve to really take advantage of all the features when it comes to color grading and just be able to do things much faster if you're doing a lot of clips at a time. So. This model right here is actually the midsize. They have a smaller and a larger one, believe it or not. And it has all your different functions of the raw controls, going to your curves, tracker, sizing, and it just correlates very well with DaVinci Resolve. There isn't any customizability or anything because everything is preset. And I personally really like that because in the past, when I checked out panels like these, I just like got very lost in where I wanted each button to be and the labels and everything were just so mixed up. When I'm doing color grading on like raw footage from the red, I can actually see all the information right here and adjust everything accordingly and turn the dials and everything. But the bottom level is where a lot of people are gonna be spending their time because it has your lift, gamma, and gain, as well as contrast, pivot, and mid detail control. Color boost is one that increases the saturation in areas that are a little bit more desaturated. And you also have your shadow and highlights, I'm sure you know, saturation, hue, and luma mix. So a lot of these dials are ones that I use all the time. And the color wheels where you really have the fine tuning and customization is 
an area that I'm trying to learn a little bit more of, but it has definitely been a very interesting experience of being able to take advantage of DaVinci using this mini panel. Being a product that is first party, it is just so well put together. Every little piece is metal, all the dials are metal, the feeling is just very satisfying and I just really love using this. I know it's a very niche product for people who do video editing and are willing to spend the money on something for video software, but I've got to say from my personal experience and being a cool tech episode, I've had a ton of fun with this panel. So aside from computers, as I mentioned, the other category that saw a lot of exciting innovation this year was in camera equipment. And there's just so many cameras you can check out this year, including the RED Komodo, the A7S III, the Sony FX9, and also the Canon R5 and R6. But aside from the RED Komodo, the other camera that I was very excited for and pre-ordered was the Canon C70. For those who don't know, my camera before I switched over to RED was the Canon 1DX2. And that was a pretty good camera, but it definitely wasn't made directly for video and it had a lot of features that I liked but was hoping to see an update on and when the Canon 1DX3 came out in some ways I was able to kind of bring some more video features that I've been waiting for but the C70 is made specifically for video and is essentially a mini version of the C200 Mark II. Just to get started on some of the specs it can shoot up to 4K 120 in C-Log2, C-Log3 and C-Log in general and there's more customization in terms of the picture profile compared to the Canon 1DX3 and the high frame rate 4k is also very nice but it also has built-in nds which is huge because having to unscrew and put on nds and stuff is a bit of a pain sometimes it also utilizes the rf mount so it goes perfectly with like the canon r5 if you go ahead and switch over to the new rf line which has stabilization at lower f-stops it even has a flip out display that is a touchscreen with great autofocus um, the dual gain iso is also nice because the dynamic range on this camera is 16 stops the other thing I also really like is that it has mini XLR because I can now connect my microphones directly to this. So in run and gun situations, this is like the perfect camera because I'm able to just take it around, record in great quality, have a log format that I'm able to grade in post. Um, and it also has stabilization built in. So that is just a nice touch. And I feel like overall the red setup is nice. It has like great image quality, but it is a huge setup. You need to bring a lot of stuff with it and it is also not the easiest setup to use in run and gun situations. So this camera seems to complement the workflow very well and it also uses SD cards with the dual slot on the front. That's like a whole bunch of nerd talk so I'm not gonna go too far in detail for that. But the other item that also came in was the DJI RS2. And this is the update to the Ronin S and I feel like this is a product that I've been waiting for for quite a while because it has updates that fix a lot of the kind of shortcomings of the previous generation, which was already very solid. First off, it has like locking mechanisms. It also stays in place. So when you're transporting it, it doesn't just like flop around. It also has a carbon fiber construction, which is lighter and more durable. And it also carries up to 10 pounds of payload, which is a bit more than the previous generation. So that is always nice to see. Um, they've also improved the plate as well. You can also get like accessories from Small Rig that are relatively inexpensive to customize this setup. Uh, there's also a screen built in now. And the other thing I didn't like about the previous generation was how it had like a joystick that could unscrew very easily. And I lost like three of them. So now it is built in. Um, there's also a lot of other things we can talk about this, such as the wireless functions that are built in that allow you to control and and kind of shift it around and use the smart settings on your tablet or smartphone. But as a gimbal itself, a lot of the improvements have been made that make it a very worthwhile upgrade because they only make a new one once every few years. So that is kind of it for the whole like camera stuff in this video and some of the items that I've been checking out lately for my workflow. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you enjoyed it, make sure you drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all in the next one.